Good morning, it's Dr. Corona from Barbados. I hope everyone is well and keeping safe. We reopened our doors at Barbados Fertility Center and we thought it was important talking to you and trying to guide you through these difficult times, answering to some important questions you might have. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that caused coronavirus disease 2019 or better known as COVID-19. COVID-19 is a new disease caused by a new virus and therefore the information regarding this, uh, this issue is evolving and changing rapidly. We know today there are uh, 3.7 million confirmed cases worldwide and unfortunately more than 260,000 deaths. Clearly there are a regional difference in terms of number of cases, in terms of number of deaths as well as peak of the disease. In some regions the pandemic is starting uh, to stabilize and therefore um, we are trying to uh, return to a sort of normal daily life and all those um, elective medical treatment that have been suspended because of the pandemic need to uh, resume, including treatment for fertility. Fer infertility is a serious disease and that requires treatment in a timely manner. With the passage of time, an increasing number of patients whose care has been delayed are now in a situation that has become more urgent. Nevertheless, it's very important to be vigilant and measure steps must be taken for safe practice and to, to minimize as much as possible the risk of infection and the risk related to the uh, disease itself. With the appropriate risk assessment, consideration of resources available and through counseling, it is possible to resume a reproductive service in an environment where COVID-19 exists. It may not be possible to offer all patients access to treatment immediately, and some consideration could include the impact of delay on potential prognosis due to medical factors such as age or vulnerability reserve or endometriosis, as well as the impact of treatment delay on the mental and emotional well-being of the patient. Each practice should consider creating providing educational material uh, for the patient, uh, trying to answer important questions like what's the impact of the pregnancy on the severity of COVID-19, as well as the impact of COVID-19 on the pregnancy, including maternal and fetal risk. We need to disclose uh, limited access to testing and unknowns regarding COVID-19, uh, potential for treatment cancellation due to exposure, infection, lack of PPE, or change regulation, uh, risk of exposure at the clinic during the treatment, options to postpone treatment when it's possible, and we need to be available to answer all the questions. One uh, important question that probably all of you uh, have right now is what's the risk of getting pregnant during this uh, pandemic? Let's start with prevention. Uh, pregnant women should follow the same recommendation as non-pregnant persons. So there are no specific uh, suggestion recommendation for pregnant women. Clinical manifestation seems to be similar to those in non-pregnant individuals. Uh, Sign and symptoms of potential concern include fever, cough, shortness of breath, also uh, rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, diarrhea sometimes, vomiting, headache, and even abnormalities in smell and taste as have been reported. Complication may include acute respiratory distress syndrome, uh, cardiac issues, issues and shock. Limited available data suggest that pregnancy and childbirth do not increase the risk for acquiring the infection and do not worsen the clinical course of COVID-19. In general though, pregnant women are known as a vulnerable group to any infection disease due to altered physiology and immunosuppression. In pregnant women who develop COVID-19 pneumonia, early data show approximately the same rate of intensive care unit admission as in non-pregnant population, but has been reported an increased risk of preterm, uh, preterm uh, birth and C-section. 
mothers to be may be more likely to develop severe respiratory illness. Uh, because of their weakened immune system, as I told you before, and also because, because of the diminished lung capacity. This has been no uh, proof yet for COVID-19, but has been proof for very similar infection that we have had in the past and studied in the past as uh, SARS. There are also to be considered a thromboembolic risk in pregnant women. We know that generally um, in, during pregnancy, risk for a thromboembolic um, event is higher. And that's why it's recommended uh, to start routinely in all uh, pregnant women with uh, COVID-19, even in a mild disease, a prophylaxis with blood thinners. In a study from New York that includes 43 pregnant patients with confirmed COVID-19, the disease course was mild in 86% in of the patient and was severe in 9% and critical in about 4.7%. In a larger cohort study of 147 pregnant patients that has been uh, reported by the WHO from the data from China, we see uh, 118 pregnant patients were included in the study and 8% were severely ill and only 1% were critically ill. This percentage seems to be similar to those of non-pregnant uh, women. Obviously, during pregnancy, uh, there are uh, added issues to be considered, such as timing of prenatal care visit, screening test, um, potential pregnancy complication, timing and management of labor and delivery, as well as postpartum care and uh, postpartum depression risk. One of the possible pregnancy complications is related to hyperthermia or fever. We know that there is always a theoretical concern when the elevation of maternal core temperature uh, is present, increasing the risk of congenital abnormalities. Uh, nevertheless, we know that the use of uh, acetaminophen in pregnancy is absolutely safe so women with fever uh, that is due to COVID-19 or any other infectious disease are encouraged to take this medication to try to decrease uh, their, uh, their temperature. Infected women, uh, especially those who develop pneumonia, appear to have an increased frequency, frequency of preterm birth. Uh, in a systematic review, including 51 uh, pregnant patients with a well-documented COVID-19, we have seen that 39% uh, delivered before 37 weeks of gestation. 26% had pre-labor rupture of membranes, 12% uh, preterm labor, and almost all the patients, 96%, were delivered by C-section. Although fever, hypoxemia, and severe pneumonia may increase the risk for preterm labor, prelabor rupture of membra membranes, and abnormal fetal heart rate, it seems that all these um, C sections were elective based on the potential, potential consequence of the infection. There was another meta analysis that is still in press uh, right now, including 19 studies and 79 women were eligible for, the, uh, for this specific review. 41 pregnancy uh, affected by COVID-19 were studied and the most uh, common adverse pregnancy outcome was uh, preterm birth. Miscarriage, preeclampsia and C-section as well as perinatal death occurring in 7-11% were also more common than in the general population. No vertical transmission has been reported in, this, in these cases. 
uh, there were only two critically ill women uh, with uh, fatal death, unfortunately. One of these women died, and this is the only uh, reported death of a pregnant woman in, uh, with COVID-19. And the other one was at the time of uh, this review on ICMO. 95% of newborns have been uh, luckily in good condition at birth and uh, the only neonatal complications that have been observed have been related to preterm birth. Let's talk a little bit more about vertical transmission that obviously is a big concern. And first we need to identify what are the criteria that should be used for a definitive diagnosis of vertical transmission. And one suggestion is neonatal nasopharyngeal swab positive for the virus within one or two hours of birth and before contact with an infected individual elevated IgM level of the virus in the cord blood. To date, has not been, this virus has not been detected in cord blood, in the amniotic fluid or in the placenta. Maternal viremia rates appear to be very low, suggesting placental seeding and vertical transmission are, are unlikely. There were two systematic reviews, including respectively 51 and 41 pregnant patients with well-documented COVID-19, and no one of these cases uh, was um, positive for intrauterine transmission. Several possible cases based on newborn laboratory or clinical findings have been reported, but in no one of these cases uh, there was uh, SARS-CoV-2 testing on fetal blood, amniotic fluid and placenta was positive, was always negative or not perform performed at, at all. For most women with um, COVID-19 and where the, severe, the illness is not um, severe, so with a mild uh, evolution of the disease, that doesn't have any other uh, medical obstetric indication or concern for prompt delivery, there is no indication for uh, a preterm uh, uh, prompt delivery. So we should wait and possibly until a negative testing result is obtained uh, or isolation status is lift, minimizing the risk for uh, postnatal, postnatal transmission to the uh, newborn. In women with severe illness, there are multiple issues to be considered and uh, timing of delivery needs to be, in this case, uh, individualized. COVID-19 is not an indication to alter the route of delivery, so C-section uh, should be performed only for sta standard obstetric indications, obviously uh, in, uh, in women with a mild disease, uh, in women with, in critical situation and normal delivery might be not possible. Even if a possible vertical transmission will be confirmed in the future, or we don't know, uh, this should not be an indication at this stage for C-section because the C-section will increase maternal risk and doesn't seem to uh, be a way to improve newborn outcome. What about the postpartum care? Uh, all infants, obviously, uh, from um, positive COVID-19 uh, mothers are considered suspect. So they should be tested, they should be isolated from the other uh, healthy infants, and uh, they should be cared accordingly, obviously, to the results of the uh, laboratory testing. Um, Mother-baby separation is being proposed, proposed is very controversial and um, the late recommendations from the CDC are uh, to uh, basically base decision on a case-by-case -case, uh, using shared decision making between the mother and the clinical team. Breastfeeding as well, it might be a concern, although there are no, um, no data suggesting a transmission of the virus through uh, the breast milk. Uh, there is only uh, one report of testing that found no virus in the maternal milk in six patients. 
and obviously breast uh, breastfeeding has many other benefits is a passive source of antibodies and other anti-infective factors that may provide passive antibody protection for the infant so at this stage uh, the, obviously again is it needs to be assessed on a case by case basis but there is no um, there is not a recommendation for avoiding breastfeeding so what are the conclusion? Conclusions are that clinical manifestation seems to be uh, the same uh, in pregnant women uh, compared to those in non-pregnant individuals. Data suggests that pregnancy and childbirth do not increase the risk for acquiring the disease and do not worsen the clinical course. In general, pregnant women are more vulnerable, so they need to be very careful and um, avoid uh, possible exposure to the virus as much as possible. The most common complication in infected pregnant women seems to be preterm birth uh, before 37 weeks of gestation. There were no cases of intrauterine transmission reported with a positive testing in fetal blood, amniotic fluid, placenta, or, um, or was not performed at all. Reports of COVID-19 infection in the newborns have generally described a mild disease, luckily. We need to be very careful though with this information because we have limited data available and they are constantly evolving. Currently, there is no evidence on the effects of the virus in the first and the second trimester of pregnancy. All the data we have discussed to now were related to women pregnant in the third trimester, and even those data are quite poor. This information applied to any pregnancy. This was not specifically for a pregnancy acquired during fertility treatment, but obviously uh, it's also true for a um, pregnancy achieved naturally. Regarding the fertility care, uh, we uh, the ASHRA and ASRM that are the probably the major entities guiding a physician on this topic um, have uh, issued some guidelines and we know that with the proper risk assessment and consideration of a resource is possible to resume in a safe manner reproductive service and it's very very important to have an individualized approach to identify what cases are more time sensitive, uh, taking into consideration the impact of delay on the prognosis of the patient due to medical factors, due to age, due to ovarian reserve and presence of other uh, diseases like endometriosis. I thank you for your attention. These are uh, all the references I've used for these uh, presentations. If you have any question, I invite you to write your question below this video and we will read all your questions, I promise, and we will try to answer as many as we can as soon as possible. Thank you again and be safe.